Uh, I'm Philip Fletcher. I'm a member of the National Environment Group. I'm chair of the Southwark DAC. And very briefly, um, speaking as first chair of the DAC, uh, I was a very green chair when I first came up against uh, the very negative perception which many parishes, no, some parishes, do have of DACs. Um, it was a rather laboured bon mot from one ex-church warden on a parish visit who said, I always call it the DOC, the Diocesan Obstruction Committee. Thankfully, I think few church wardens do see it that way, but I suggest that all DACs need to just keep working all the time to show the positive side of our work, that it is valuable, hopefully, to parishes, to dioceses, to civil society at large, which is partly the subject of this conference. So when we as Southwark DAC decided to produce a response to the Southwark diocesan vision, with the strapline hearts on fire with a vision for growth, we decided to cross-refer to all five of the church's marks of mission, but particularly to mark five, safeguarding the integrity of creation. It was a collective decision, warmly supported by all DAC members and advisors, and not because of my role on the environment group. It was essential clearly that we satisfy the Chancellor that in producing a vision statement we didn't imply any departure from our statutory responsibilities. So it needed to be a statement that carried weight, not a bureaucratic exercise, and Luke Tatum, who's with us on this conference, will say more on how we got there. But it was very cheering that our statement had the unanimous support first of the DAC, then of the Chancellor, then of the Diocesan Council of Trustees, and finally of the Diocesan Synod, particularly recognising the emphasis on Mark V. I don't expect a similar set of responses when I next present a report to a Synod. I wanted to finish my bit by looking at one short case study, and I picked one that wasn't easy. It was a pre-CC's proposal from St. Michael's Blackheath for floodlighting their spire. As you can see, it's a tall, elegant spire. It's known as the Needle of Kent because by day it's visible from Blackheath for miles around, not least to weary travellers slogging into South London along the A2 or the A20. And the parish wanted floodlighting now, how could the DAC possibly support something that would inevitably have some carbon footprint issues attached to it? We looked at all the angles. We concluded first that the parish had taken every step they could to minimise their footprint, not just this floodlighting proposal, but fittings, suppliers, offsets, hours of use. It was part of a package. Together, it would reduce significantly the church's carbon footprint. And third, there were clear gains in terms of the other marks of mission, notably the proclamation of the gospel to South London centred in a lively parish. So, hearts in mouths, we did recommend the floodlighting proposals, and the Chancellor after very properly checking our reasoning and comments from other interested parties, has granted the parish a faculty. I'm more than prepared, provided I can go on being heard, uh, to uh, defend this in discussion afterwards if we get a chance. Thank you very much. And over to Luke. Thank you for the introduction, Philip. I hope everyone can hear me all right. I'm now going to talk a bit more about our DSE's response to Southwark Vision. Um, we try to uh, bridge the common experience of reconciling statutory responsibilities and adherence to heritage best practice with the role that the DAC has to play fruitfully in furthering the mission of the church. Uh, there can be a perception that the DAC as a committee is, although in the diocese, not of the diocese. This is somewhat correct in the way that we as DACs along with the chancellors 
consider whether to permit changes to our listed places of worship, but we felt we had to knit together more closely our DAC's identity and its sense of what it was doing and why and how with that of the diocese more widely. Like many dioceses, our bishop had led us in forming a vision which underpins all that we as a diocesan family are doing. By diocesan family, I have in mind the bishop and his senior staff colleagues and the diocesan office staff team, the boards and committees of the diocese, diocesan and deanery synods and parish clergy, PCCs and congregations. And so we wanted to respond in a way which helped us to shape our own identity as a group and also to show to the diocese at large what it was that we, the DAC, were all about. We were mindful that the DAC constitution was due to be revised in 2020. In the constitution itself, we have now included a brief yet important emphasis on mission in two aspects. Not only, as it is legally obliged to do, will the DAC have due regard to the parish ch church as a local centre of worship and mission, but also to have due regard to the diocesan vision, which is how Southwark Diocese sees the mission of God being worked out in our context of South London and East Surrey. In this task, we were helped by our Chancellor and Registrar who challenged us to think carefully and assisted us in finding the right balance in the final wording. We then set about drawing together various threads in an accompanying document which responded to the diocesan vision in more detail. Kindly, the organisers of the conference have circulated this around to you in advance as a handout, um, and I invite you to look at uh, what we've produced. Not only have we assimilated the breadth of the diocesan vision in articulating mission, but we've also looked for inspiration to material from non-diocesan organisations, such as Historic England. This ensures that we are also upholding principles that members of the committee, who are drawn from a wide range of backgrounds and specialisms, consider are important, and which, when properly applied, need not conflict with the church's mission. A couple of PowerPoint slides which Catherine is about to show you will give you examples. Thank you, Catherine. In this first slide, the DAC commits to promoting the understanding and appreciation of church buildings, including valuing them as sacred spaces, and to championing church buildings, including recognising them as having a crucial role in enabling church congregational growth. In the next slide, which we now move on to, the DAC commits to assisting parishes in striving to safeguard the integrity of creation through the sustainable use and suitable adaptation of their church buildings, and to endorsing and publicising good conservation practice in repair and alteration to historic buildings. We continue to think about how this new attitude and identity will continue to shape our DAC's work for the care and conservation of church buildings, this is alongside the part we play in furthering the church's mission across the five marks of mission and as articulated in our own diocesan vision, which includes, but is by no means limited to, the environment and the care of creation. This is what we are now going to hear about in more detail from Bristol Diocese. Thank you. <laughs> 